Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to give you an introduction to global atmospheric circulation, which is a concept covered in every GCSE geography specification. So for those of you that are new to my channel, these videos come with worksheets that you can actually complete while you're watching the video in order to either complete home learning or to create a nice set of revision summary notes. So you can find the link to these worksheets in the description box below. They are completely free and uh, let's get started. So, what is global atmospheric circulation? Well, it's a concept that causes areas to have some types of weather more often than others. It basically affects the Earth's climate and our climate zones. Now, when we're thinking about global weather patterns, we're referring here to the worldwide movement of heat energy, and it causes different weather conditions around the world. Now, there are three main ways that this occurs. We've got global circulation cells, which is what we're going to be looking at today in association with global atmospheric circulation. We've got ocean currents and we've got jet streams. So let's focus in on global atmospheric circulation then. So the air around the Earth, it moves in circular motions. OK, we call these convection cells. This is caused by the sun heating the Earth and the air by the equator is heated up more than the air towards the poles. This air circulates between what we call areas of high and low pressure belts or borders as surface winds, trade winds. The differences in air pressure, this high and low air pressure, are caused by differences in temperature between the equator and the poles, driven by that solar radiation from the sun. So let's draw a diagram of global atmospheric circulation so we can get familiar with this concept in more detail. So if you're working on the worksheets, you have got a box with the Earth in the middle and we're going to turn this into a diagram of global atmospheric circulation. If you're not working on the worksheets, you can easily do this on a plain A4 piece of paper. So we're going to start off and we're going to add in our lines of latitude. So we've got the equator at zero degrees, which we can also call the intertropical convergence zone. So I-T-C-Z for short. Then we've got to put 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south latitude lines on our planet as well, as well as 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south. Now, when it comes to global atmospheric circulation, there are three main cells. You've got your Hadley cell, and that's the first cell we're going to draw on the right hand side of our planet. And the Hadley cell is where we have air moving between the equator and 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. So what happens on the equator or the intertropical convergence zone is that the sun is sending the most concentrated amount of solar radiation towards the equator. So the sun heats up the earth at the equator the most and that heats up the air on the equator and the intertropical convergence zone. This causes the air to rise around the equator, creating an area of low pressure. So between our two Hadley cells, we can add in that low pressure area. This low pressure air is rising air, which is why if you notice your two arrows in your Hadley cell, either side of the low pressure are rising. And this is because when we have low pressure, the air rises, cools and condenses and creates clouds, which then leads to precipitation or rainfall. Now, if we then think about the direction that air then is circulating to within our Hadley cell. So within our Hadley cell, the air then moves to 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south of the equator. And that then creates high pressure on those areas, that 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. And that is because the air is sinking. So it's moving back to the equator in a circular motion. It's descending in that circular motion within the Hadley cell. And the process obviously repeats and occurs again. So the sun heats up the air at the equator, it rises to cause low pressure, and then it descends at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south, and that causes high pressure there. 
the high pressure will instead create clear skies and dry conditions because we have not got any evaporation taking place there to create clouds. Now, this is where we then introduce our second cell, which is known as our feral cell. And our feral cell is when we have the circulation of air moving now between 30 degrees north and south of our planet and 60 degrees north and south. So again, at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south, the air has sunk. It's descended to create that high pressure and it will either move back to the equator or within our feral cell now, it will move 60 degrees north or south. So when it is then included in your feral cell and comes into contact with the latitude lines of 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south on our planet, the air again will rise and create that area of low pressure. So that rising air again will cool and condense to create clouds and therefore lead to precipitation. So between your Hadley cell and your feral cell, you have areas of high pressure because that air is descending, it's coming down. But between your feral cell and your polar cell, you have that air rising again to create those areas of low pressure. Now that then leads us nicely on to our third and final convection cell, which is known as the polar cell. And these particular cells will move air between the 60 degrees north and south latitude lines and the north and south poles. At the north and south poles, the air again is sinking, causing an area of high pressure. So remember, high pressure is when the air is descending, it's coming down towards the earth. And again, that high pressure creates clear skies and dry conditions. Now at the end here, we can also add in our, our winds, our large scale movements of air causing differences in pressure. And what you can see on the diagram again is that these winds move from the areas of high pressure to the areas of low pressure in a circular motion. And that completes the concept of global atmospheric circulation. So, as always everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you're finding these videos useful, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.